Hello, uh, my name is Hanna Schöld. It was almost right, thank you. He rehearsed before. Uh, I am working on a crowdsourced project called Granny's Dancing on the Table. And my journey into crowdsourcing was through the distribution of my first feature, Nasty Old People, which we released with the Creative Commons license on the front page of the Pirate Bay. And it was there for three days on the front page, and we got over 50,000 downloads during those days. And people from all over the world engaged and contributed in the distribution in many different ways. Uh, the, I started the production of the movie with a bank loan of 10,000 euros, and people donated money through a simple PayPal account to help me pay the bank loan back. And this was a great story, but there happened, it happened so much more, which I didn't expect when we first released the movie. Uh, the first thing that happened is that they started to translate the subtitles into 17 different languages. And the first subtitles we got was Portuguese, and it came in after only two days. People also started to remix the movie. Uh, for me, when we decided for Creative Commons, this was the hardest part for me, or the hard part, the only hard part, because you know the editing took so long, and when it was finished, I felt that I don't want anyone to change this, really. I want it to be as it ended up, and what will happen? How will they do? I'm not, I didn't feel really safe with it at all. But when I got the first remix, I was really, really, truly happy to see that someone put so much time and effort into this story, this project, that they actually wanted to do remix. So now I'm totally convinced and I want to definitely keep working with remixing. What people also did was that they started to organize live screenings. And the first live screening happened in Vladivostok, uh, which is kind of as far away from Sweden as you can get. And it took only one week for it to get to Vladivostok. Vladivostok. And this is a picture from um, the screening in Kiev, where people also printed their own posters of the movie. And in Sweden, in Kiev, they called Nasty Old People for Swedish love. <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to uh, Granny's Dancing on the Table, which is a transmedia project. We are five companies who work together, and it will end up in a movie, a game, and live events. And when we started this process, I, I felt that I wanted to keep the relationship with all those people who had contributed to the distribution of Nasty Old People, but I also wanted to find out what would happen if we open up the process earlier and invite people to take part in the creative process and not only in the distribution. So, first of all, we made a page on Facebook where we invited people to take part in the script writing process. I didn't release the script there, but I started to ask questions about the characters and the, the dialogue and the scenes. And I wanted to know if anyone had had the same experiences as my characters. And what really surprised me is that many people were really personal. They didn't just came with ideas and thoughts. They told their, their own stories of their own life and explore their own fears and their own feelings con connected to the themes of the movie. And then, and then I was thinking that, okay, I mean, sharing personal stories is really a great way to, to engage people really deeply into a story world, but also to to create a strong community, because when you share personal stories, you also get to know each other, and the people within inside the community get to know each other. And the next step was to create workshops, small workshops. It was the, the game designers who works with um, scrapbooking technique. So they use pictures and for people to associate between those pictures, the themes of the movie, and their own stories. Once again, I was surprised that people could come together for three hours and they didn't know each other from before and get deeply into, into their own lives and also into the story world. And this has been really important for us uh, during the development of the game. Uh, right now, we are in the middle of our first live event. It's called Granny Day. And we encourage people to 
upload a picture of their granny and to write a short story about her. And we have received stories from all around the world. Um, and one of the th themes uh, for Granny's Dancing on the Table is the search for identity and to, to look into your past to see what happened in the past and what, how has that affected me in my life now. And it's about this girl, Amy, who searches for her, goes on a journey and searches for her granny. And we wanted people not only to take part in, to create the story about Amy and contribute with ideas for this, we wanted them also to go on a journey with Amy and to, to look into their own pasts and see What's, what, who's my granny? And how did my granny story affect me? Because then we, it was like, that then you have, then you do the experience yourself that the story is about. And we, we hope that the people will get an even, even deeper experience within the story world while looking at their own lives. And I really love this one. I thought when I, it's from Poland. When I got this one, I thought, oh, I want to see that forest. <laughs> And also this one is very inspiring for me because I was confronted with my own prejudices. Uh, I couldn't really, I didn't really expect to find that story behind this picture. This is a story about an amazing woman who came to Sweden. She, she wasn't allowed to go to school. She came from Iraq. Uh, but today she's a political fighter and she encourages her grandchildren to, to educate themselves. And she's an inspiration for many people. So this way, I think it's also like collecting stories that tells, tells a female story that hasn't been told or isn't told so very often. We use those pictures in a street exhibition. We simply print the pictures and the, te the text together and put them up. And right now it's going on in Malmö this week. It's the first, the first exhibition that we have. And then this exhibition will also go on a tour uh, to other countries. We have been contacted by people who want to host their own exhibitions in their own hometowns. Towns. So we just simply send them the pictures and they can do whatever they want with them. So the first country is Serbia now. In two weeks they will, they will hold the exhibition and then he will send it, pass it on to the next country and so on. Um, so, why do I want to work with crowdsourcing? Um, crowdsourcing in this way, because it's a lot about sharing personal stories for other people. And I think that, for me, it's first of all because we need each other's stories. Uh, I believe in the power of storytelling, and when we tell our stories and when we listen to other stories, we also understand each other and ourselves much better. And we also, when we create the space where people can tell the stories, we kind of facilitate meetings between people, true meetings. This also connects to the issue about who's telling what for whom. I mean, now for this, um, for Granny's Dancing, we have the contributors are mainly female 30 plus which is a group that is maybe not always considered so much as the, the contributors in this internet world. And I think it's great that we reach out, manage to reach out to this, to this group, but also that stories that maybe not is heard, like those, many of those granny stories that doesn't have really a room always in the culture, they can come out and they can have a space when all people are invited to tell their stories within a story world. And of course, it's, I mean, basically just also a marketing tool because if people contribute to the story world, of course, they will want their friends and family to take part and participate in different ways, to watch the movie and play the game and so on. And all this process has also made me think a lot about you know, process and result and the contradiction in between. Because for me as a filmmaker, I am often very used to look at the result, what's on the screen is what matters, nothing else. I mean, the process is just what you're doing to get the result. At the same time, I mean, for me personally also, the, result, the process is everything, but when it comes to the relationship to the audience, it's normally it's only the result that counts. But now, during this 
work with crowdsourcing, the process becomes much more important. And the process is also part of the result because what's been written on Facebook, the stories that people have shared, all the granny stories and the stories for the, for the script, they exist and they are important and important to me and to other people and to those who share their stories. And they will be there no matter the result of the, the movie and the game. And I mean, of course, I want to have a fantastic uh, movie and a fantastic game, but I mean, I love the fact that the process can take so much place and be, be so much a part of the result because it's in the process that the, the relationships happen anyway, I think. So I want to finish with just a few words about the price for crowdsourcing, or how to say, because I mean, it's not for free. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort to engage people, to contribute, to find, to find the page and to actually, uh, like for Granny Day, actually scan in the picture and upload it on Facebook and write the stories. And sometimes I think to myself, because it's so much to do, I mean, in the story world, and we are also making the movie and everything, and I think to myself, is it worth it? Because it, it doesn't give any money back, for example, at least not right now in the beginning at this moment. But I think somehow that crowdsourcing could be part of our journey against sustainable development, because if we look at the social and the culture values and consider them to be as high as the economical values, then for me, at least, it's totally worth the time and the effort. My name is Hanna Schöld, and if you want to take a look at the project, you can go to Granny's Dancing on Facebook or grannysdancing.com. Thank you. <laughs>